to know about Tammy at this stage. Absolutely. So Tammy Miller, currently the 39th Lieutenant Governor in the great state of North Dakota. I have, uh, prior to coming to the Governor's office, I was the CEO at Border States Electric, did that job for 14 years, and during that time, uh, hired a lot of great talent, um, managed big budgets, and really learned how to deliver great service. And I want to take that expertise to the citizens of North Dakota. And All of that private experience will be good for the state of North Dakota. And you have that private experience, and then also, you know, the experience within the governor's office. Absolutely. So you've seen a lot, uh, also being a North Dakota native, and you know that there are various ways that North Dakotans can help the state out via service. Why governor? What, why is governor the best place for Tammy Miller to help out the people of North Dakota? Well, I have been part of the Burgum administration for four years. We have a lot of great work, a uh, lot of great momentum going on with our growing economy. We got income taxes reduced, but we didn't get them completely eliminated, so we'd want to finish the job on that. want to f completely uh, push back on all of this um, regulation that's coming out of the Biden administration, and then want to really promote safety and security in our state. I think of my background, if I can take just a few minutes to talk about my Go background, yeah. uh, my hometown is Brockett, North Dakota. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Uh, I did a little check. You, are you still a population under 100? Or? The population is 34. Okay, there you go. Yes. So that's where I grew up. My parents had a business called Miller Shopping Center on the Prairie. You know, when you're a child of business owners, you don't always get the best jobs. So did jobs like stocking shelves and cleaning toilets. And our business was out in the country, basically. We lived a mile away from it, and uh, the robbers knew that it took a while for the sheriff to come, so our store was frequently robbed, and we would go there with our shotguns and protect it until the sheriff arrived. I then went uh, on to become a CPA, worked a little bit in public accounting, and then went to work for one of my clients, Border States Electric, started as the accounting manager, and then worked my way up to CEO. And I told you a little bit of that story thereafter. And so as far as the, what came after that, Lieutenant Governorship, uh, a lot of political campaigns are based on prior experience. Yes. Uh, you're basically as close to the office as you could get at this point in time. So tell us about that. Is this like a, a vice president to president situation? You're just moving your desk across the hall? How does Lieutenant Governor prepare you best for this potential new role? Well, I'll remind you that I've only been the Lieutenant Governor for a little bit over a year, a bit, so yeah. not a lot of experience in that role, but have worked with the Governor for four years really understand the momentum that we've built and want to take that to the next level. So I am well prepared. That bit of time as Lieutenant Governor has been very helpful, understanding what all of our state agencies do. But I think the business experience, being a business leader, is the best preparation I have to move into the Governor's office. The citizens of North Dakota have uh, before voted on uh, candidates. They tend to like business leaders in the Governor's office in the capital in Bismarck, as well as in Washington, D.C. Well, uh, I'll ask then about a politician, uh, your opponent in this race, just asking about timelines. Uh, he declared the day after Governor Burgum said that he wouldn't be seeking re-election, and uh, we're about three weeks out from that. So walk me through that time. What was going through your mind? What was the reason for uh, that pause, if you will? I don't want to call it a delay, yeah. however you would like to say Absolutely. It. Well, Kelly had been talking about the governorship for quite some time. I actually didn't know if the governor was going to seek a third term until the night before he announced. We talked about it at 10 o'clock and he had made up his mind at that time. So I have taken some time to work with the team to be well prepared and it did take some time to make a decision because I was frankly thinking the governor would uh, seek out a third term as governor. So it took some time to talk with the family, made the decision and put together a great team. And when we're announcing today, we're hitting the ground running. You maybe have seen some ads, websites are up, so we're ready to go. And speaking of the governor, uh, we know he's not seeking another term, maybe moving on to different things. What sort of legacy do you think Governor Burgum leaves behind for the state of North Dakota? Well, I think we can just look back and see where the state is. Our economy is thriving, tourism is better, we're getting a presidential library, and he has really, uh, left a legend in North Dakota with his great work and the culture he's built. Now, I don't mean to compare you to Kelly Armstrong, but uh, at this moment in time, I don't have a Democratic challenger for you to base yourself off of. As I'm sure you well know, the state hasn't had a Democrat in office in this position since 92. So what sets you apart? What, what's going to make the voters go to the polls and say, no, 
I want I want Tammy. She's got a little bit something different to offer. Well, I think compared to Kelly, the big difference is I am a proven business leader, and the people of North Dakota like business leaders in the governor's office. And uh, as far as policies go, is there anything at the top of your agenda? Is there something on day one you're really looking to get accomplished? Absolutely, and a lot of it is continuing this great momentum we have going under Governor Burgum. So continuing to focus on growing and diversifying the economy. We made a good first step in reducing individual income taxes during the last legislative session. We want to eliminate individual income tax across the state and keep those dollars back in, to in uh, taxpayers' pockets. Want to push back on the Biden administration and this overreaching regulation that they keep pushing out. We want to really watch spending, maximize every dollar, and then pr promote public safety. Really backing the blue, the brown, the green, and as we like to say also, make, mili make North Dakota the most military-friendly state in the nation. And so what are the next steps? Uh, this is day one. Yes. You're in Fargo right now. Where are we headed next? What, what, what do the next few weeks, months look like in terms of a game plan? Absolutely. So uh, this afternoon we will get to Bismarck. We'll do a bit of a media tour in Bismarck, and then we will be hitting the ground running, getting out to see as many uh, individuals in the state of North Dakota as we can to show up, listen, and learn from them. All right. Is there anything that uh, I didn't hit in my questions that you would like to make sure that the people know? I would just like to remind everyone that I am a proven business leader. Uh, the citizens of North Dakota do like business leaders in the governor's office. We want to continue to grow the economy and eliminate the individual income tax. And if anyone would like to get to know more about me, check me out at TammyMiller.com. Well, those are all the questions that I had. Perfect. I think we can let you go on that. Thank How you. How are we doing on time, Dawson? Awesome. Good. Thank you. I appreciate it.